Hey everyone, welcome to another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. Big news y'all, Resolve 17 has just been released and it's packed with new features on all of its pages. So I'll be doing a series of videos going over some of those new features. In this video, I'm gonna be covering some of the new features and improvements for editing. So they're not just specifically for the edit page per se, because you can access a lot of these features in the media, edit, and cut page. So these are some of the new features, improvements that will help you when editing. But just to keep this video relatively short, I'm only gonna be able to cover a few things. So I'm gonna talk about the new proxy media workflows, importing, exporting DaVinci Resolve bins and timeline files, hover scrub previews for titles, effects, and transitions, and live font previews in your title tools. All right, so let's get started. Now, first off is Resolve now has a new proxy media workflow. Now, Resolve has always had their optimized media workflow, but the optimized media files that were generated were proprietary Resolve media files, DVCC, and those were found in a very, uh, you know, deep uh, folder structure with folders that aren't really named really clearly. Uh, and they were useless outside of Resolve. But now you have a proxy media workflow that generates files in codecs and resolutions that you specify. So yes, finally, Resolve has made working with standalone proxy files as easy as working with optimized media where you can switch back and forth between proxy and original with just the click of a button, and you can link and unlink those proxy files really quickly. Let me show you how easy it is. Now I'm here in the media page and I've got some clip he clips here that are raw clips. So I've got some Blackmagic Raw from the new 12K camera. You can see that this resolution is 12K. And I've got some R3D files, red files that are 8K. So I cannot play these files back in real time. You can see it is slowly chugging along. Okay, so this is a great case of creating proxy files. Before I get into creating them, I wanna show the new metadata columns here for proxies. So I'll right click at the column header and I'm going to enable proxies and proxy media path. Okay. Now that I have it, I can see that there are no proxies because I haven't created any proxies, so it'll tell me none. And the proxy media path, there's nothing here because there's no proxy. Next thing I want to do is go into my project settings and specify my transcode codex. I'm going into the master settings and down to optimize media and render cache. This is where we will select our resolution and format. Proxy media resolution, you can choose from the original all the way down to 1 16th, or you can have Resolve choose it automatically. I'm gonna go with 1 16th so that it is very obvious to you guys. And the format, which is the codec, you've got a bunch of different codecs here. I am on a Mac, so I have ProRes. Uh, I'm going to choose a low bit rate pro, uh, codec that's ProRes, which is the proxy. And then below that is the final thing I want to set up is the proxy generation location inside the working folder. So this is where those proxies are going to get created. So you can specify wherever I have specified it into a folder here on my drive and it's called proxy media. All right, let me save that. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is select the clips that I want to create proxies from and right click. And there's a new menu item here below generate, generate optimized media called generate proxy media and click that to get it started. And that's all I need to do. So this may take a while. So what I'll do is just fast forward through all of this and pick up when it's done. Once it's done, you'll see the proxy column update and show the resolution of your proxy. Since I chose a really low resolution, you'll see that low res uh, information there. It'll also show you the proxy media path where it's saving it. So let me bring this clip up and 
I have a proxy here and I want to make sure that I am looking at the proxies. So I'm going to the playback menu and making sure that I check the use proxy media if available. Once I select that, I can see that it is now using the low resolution proxy. So this is a 12K file, but then the proxies are 768 by 405. So standard def, basically. Let me toggle that on and off, and you can see the difference. Let me go to one of these red files and turn on the proxy. These are 512 by 270, so very, very small files. You can see that resolution there. Let me fit this back in and I should have no problem playing these back in real time. In reality, I probably wouldn't be choosing such a small proxy resolution, but because for this demonstration purposes, I wanted to make sure people saw the difference in the quality. And so it's very obvious that we're using proxies or we're using the original camera files. Okay, so let me put this on a timeline and I'll jump into the edit page with the proxies playing back fine again. And here is jumping back into the original. There's a little bit of a, a stutter going on and choking on that. This is definitely not going to be able to be played in real time. I'll select that. I'll turn, so I will uh, enable proxy media and start playing it. Okay, everything is playing back in real time, as you can see here. So, so now that we've got proxies, let me show you how to link and unlink proxies if you have them created. So I'll highlight all these clips here, right click on a uh, one of the clips here and at the bottom because they do have proxies linked to it I now can unlink the proxy media and resolve will default back to using the original camera files so I can always have this selected but if there are no proxies it's going to use the original camera files relinking proxies is a very simple process to find the proxies that were generated i'll go to the proxy generation location which is in this folder structure here okay and then proxy media now one really interesting thing that resolve does is whatever folder you've selected to save the proxies in resolve will put your proxy files in a location that mirrors the folder structure of your original camera files so as you can see here in my proxy media, it's created this film projects, which is where the original media files were saved. And this is the folder structure for the 8K red files. And they're in here. So all I need to do is highlight the clips that I need to relink. So I will right click on one of these clips. I'll link the proxy media. and then I'm gonna to navigate to that folder. Okay, so that's the correct file. Now, I actually did not have to go in and choose them individually. I can highlight all of them and link the proxy media. And I can just go to the root folder and just open and it will search through just like I'm linking media that's offline. All right, and it finds it all. So that's working with proxies in Resolve. It's a great new feature to allow people to work with the more common proxy editing workflow, giving you the ability to take proxies onto a different hard drive and edit with them and then easily link them back to the original camera files. So the next thing I want to show is exporting and importing DRBs and DRTs, which are DaVinci Resolve bin files 
and DaVinci Resolve timeline files. So first, let me talk about a DRB or DaVinci Resolve bin. New in 17, you can now export your bins directly from your media pool so that you can import them in another project. So let me show you how, how to export and import these. For bins, I can export an entire bin structure just like this and use it across all of my projects. So I can start a new project from scratch and set up my bin structure in an instant. So for those who are Avid users, uh, it's similar to an AVB, right? An Avid bin. So uh, first I'll use the structure here in the media pool that's already here with the master bin and all these other sub bins. And it's got a few things in here, media and all this stuff in here. I'm going to right click on the master bin and I'll go down to export bin. Next, it'll bring up a box and it'll tell Resolve where to save it and what to name that DRB file as. Okay, I'll just name it bin structure and I'll save that out. Also, I want to save out this timeline specifically. So I'll look for my proxy timeline, which is here. And when I go into X, I can right click and go to export. And I'll go into this first. And what I need to do is change the options down to DaVinci Resolve Timeline Files. And I'll name it Proxy Timeline Resolve. All right, I have this new project created already. So I'm ready to import my DRB file and my DRT file. So first off, I'm going to lay out my structure, my organizational structure. So I'm going to import, and then I can do an import bin. I'm going to the DRB R17 bin structure, and I'll open that. And there you go. It imported all of these in, in there. So now the next thing is, Let's, for example, if I did not have my proxy timeline here, I'll delete this. Okay. Now, let me import this new timeline. And this is the DRT file. And it will import here. And this is my timeline. And that's importing DRBs and DRTs, which are new in Resolve 17. Again, another great way of helping you get your project up faster. So while we're in the edit page, I wanted to talk about a number of really useful improvements to titles, transitions, and effects that will help you work faster. So in the same way that Live Media Preview um, allows you to hover over a clip and preview the clip. You can now hover over titles, transitions and effects and preview them in your viewers. So I'm just hovering over these titles right here. Let me, let me do this one and yep. So I'm hovering it back and forth and it will go back and forth in real time. Let me go over a transition. Now, when you go over a transition and your focus is in the uh, in the source viewer, it's going to give you a random clip and then do the transition to another random clip. So that may or may not be helpful to you. I'm going to go back to my actual timeline viewer and do it there. So I'm going to use a blur dissolve. And let me move this. So it's blurring from the where my playhead is actually. So. I'm going to go closer to the 
two, uh, the first two clips and blur dissolve from there. So I'm just hovering back and forth. So this is really cool. So you can now quickly preview all these. So I'm going through all these transitions and they're doing this in a pretty much a real time way. So it's because I'm using proxies. If I were using the original files, it may it may choke a little bit. So let's do that on the 8K files. Yep, so it's taking a little bit longer to process because of that. And a lot better. All right. Now, I've also said that you can do this on the uh, filters. So you can choose a filter like a radial blur. You may not see it. Okay, there, mosaic blur, a lens blur. Let me go to something, a grid. And by the way, there's a couple of new things to throw in here. Now, additionally, you can see that the inspector has been redesigned. Everything is still there in the inspector tab, just laid out in a more efficient manner. You've got the video audio effects file tab there. So for example, if I wanted to change some parameters on the false color, I can jump into the effects and change it to something different. Let me remove this effects. Okay. So let me add a title. I'll just add a regular text plus title. So this may be a small addition, but it's very useful. You can now preview your font or font style by hovering over the new selection. So, f right, look at this. So finally, so many of us has asked for this and now it's in there. So this works for fusion titles too, uh, like the text plus and all the templates. So it works for all the titles that are available here. So you click this and go into a bunch of different fonts and you can just see the what the font looks like by hovering over it. All right, now that's just a small handful of the new features that are in the edit page of Resolve 17. I'll be doing another one on the new features of the color page and another one on the new stuff in the Fairlight page uh, sometime in the coming weeks. So subscribe to our channel so you can get notifications when those videos are released. If you wanna learn more about the other improvements and updates on the edit page, or if you've got any questions please leave a comment below. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time.